All right. Um, welcome to lab six. And I'm starting here in Canvas so you can see you need to um, look at the instructions, of course, um, which I have open so that we can zoom in enough. And you will also need to download this JPEG. This is a spooky photo. I have downloaded it already. Um, but you want to move it from your downloads or wherever it's saved into your MATLAB folder or whatever folder you're working out of um, so that MATLAB can find it. And then you're going to want to uh, come over to MATLAB and make yourself a new script and call it Lab 6 or something like that. Put the lab, you put your name. I'm putting clear all close all CLC in my code because it's going to be opening figures and I don't want it to build up like 20 figures every time I run it. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. So let's go over and look at the instructions. We're, we're going to be doing something kind of fun and cool. This is like one of those like, oh, a nifty lab. Interesting. Uh, wanted to throw one of these in there um, because next week it'll be our final lab and we will be doing it over um, some eigenvalue stuff which we haven't covered yet, of course. Um, and so this week we're just kind of doing a, a fun one, a not very advanced one, but an interesting one. What we're going to be doing is mm, changing the color effects on a photo, which is kind of how like Instagram filters work. Uh, well, okay, old school Instagram filters when you would take a picture and you would put the filter. I'm not talking about how the heck they do all of those like Snapchat things where they can like map your face and whatnot. I'm talking about old school like photo editing presets, you know, how to manipulate channels, let's say. Okay, so you can actually do this with uh, with MATLAB, believe it or not. Here's the spooky picture that I was talking about. It's like, whoop, okay, there he is. Um, what you're doing is going to be taking a picture and converting it basically into a matrix by saying that I have like a, a two by two matrix grid and um, inside each of those entries, which represent the pixels in the picture, there's going to be kind of three values. There's going to be three numbers in there, um, and they are going to represent the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue in that pixel to make the pixel a certain color. I kind of picture this as like you're looking at a matrix and you turn it to the side a little bit and you can see three boxes behind each entry and those three boxes have those three numbers in it. Okay. Um, the standard is that they go, the, the values of those numbers that tell you like how much of a certain color is in there go from zero to 255. And what we're going to do is use matrices to manipulate those values. Um, okay. So what we need to do first is actually load the picture into MATLAB and display it. And what we want to do is use imshow and imread. So let's figure out how to use those by going in here. Oh, look, my MATLAB was angry with me. Say help imread. I'm guessing we want that first to read in the picture or the JPEG. So let's just look for some information here. Try to go back to the, the top. Um, wow, this is a long, long documentation one, isn't it? Oof. Okay, here we go. So uh, what we're going to do is put in um, the file name. Mm, man, okay, there we go. So it looks like the first argument is the file name and um, it's going to read a picture from the file specified by a string. So we're going to put in here a string. Um, let's just start typing this maybe. Um, we're going to call this mjpeg, I think, here. And we're going to use mread. And when it says put it in as a string, a character string, um, we want to put quotes and say the name of it, which was this. Hopefully that will take. And then FMT specifies the format. So um, what we want to do is probably say JPEG. Ah, so let's just say baboon here and let's say uh, JPEG. And let's, let's see if it will run. 
let's just make sure it runs first. It won't show anything yet because, okay, cool. So then it reads in a an array here. And, oh, you probably can't see this because the numbers are tiny, but look on your lab when you do this. And it'll say that the dimensions of your, oh, uh, let's just do this, size in JPEG. I'll probably have you do this in the lab. See this, it is 512 by 512 by three. And that's what I mean by think of behind each entry, like three little boxes. It's actually a multi-dimensional array. Okay, um, but we would like to also see the photo. So um, let's look up the mshow command and see how to use that. Okay. M show I displays the grayscale image. I M show RGB displays the true color image RGB. File name. This is what we want. The file must contain an image that M red or Oh look, we might be able to do this. Oh, see, we need in red because we want to hide, we want to store it in here, in the workspace. Um, but M show should be able to take this. Wow, can you hear my cat? <laughs> okay, let's see if this runs. Ooh, we should, we might need to say figure first. We could try this with the, with the full file name. And let's try saying figure. Oh, it already made a figure, so it doesn't need us to say figure. It must be built into M show. Nice. Oh, look, it's trying to tell me what we can do. Um, can we make this a little bigger? Okay, so you can see this matches the picture, like this is the photo. So we have read it in to the script, and it displays it, and it has also logged it as a variable. So now we have everything we need. Okay. I think that's task one, right? Do, 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 do. Displaying it on the screen using him show and M read. We did awesome. Okay, so to do the image below, we do. And the variable is in fact MJPG. So we're good there. Check the dimensions using the command MNL size. So I did this spontaneously already, but let's make sure that we get them back as variables that are stored. So MNL are our three um, dimension sizes, variables, and we're going to say size, and we're saying mjpeg. And let's run this. Um, we already know it's going to work because we tried size on it before. And you can see it returns back 512, 512, and 3. So this is, I'm going to suppress it now because I don't want to see it again. Um, this is telling us the dimensions of the array. So it is actually three dimensional. Um, okay. So the first thing we're going to do here is look at the amount of red, green, and blue in the image. And so what we're going to do is actually extract the individual layers um, from the array. Now when we do that, so for example for the red channel we're going to use this code. We might as well just copy and paste it. When we do this, what is this code doing? It's making a new variable called red channel, and it says go into mjpeg, take all the rows and all the columns, but just the first like entry in each one, in each of those. I think of them as cubbies, right? These are like a whole grid of cubbies, and in the cubbies there's three numbers, and I'm saying take the first number. It corresponds to red. We're gonna do this for um, green and blue as well. Let's just see what they should be named. Green channel and blue channel. Okay, green channel. And so for that, I'm gonna say, go into mjpeg, take all the rows and all the columns, but take the second thing in the cubby, which is the green value. And then blue channel. And that's gonna be the same thing, but take the third item because our GB, right? RGB, the order that they come in, is red, green, blue. Okay, so let's run this. It should run, but it probably won't display anything. It's just showing the first figure that we had before. Um, but we should show them using figure and imshow. Okay, so um, 
they're going to come out like this. So let's see if we can get stuff to come out in that form. We're going to say figure. We're going to say M show. And let's try putting in the variable name and see if it has any problem with that. Let's just run it for now and see. All right, so you can see it's made our original figure, no problem. And it's now made another figure with just this isolated channel. We're gonna do the same thing. Keep saying figure um, because oof, green channel because otherwise it's gonna keep overriding the same figure and we don't want that. We wanna see all of these separately. Okay, so there's those. Make sure it runs. See what we get. Okay, so you can see it, you can actually see it as it works making the different figures. So here's the red channel, here's the green channel, here's the blue channel. Now, does this make sense? Check this out. See in the original picture how much blue there is here? See how bright this is here? Interesting. Okay. So um, why do these print out as gray? Remember that um, MATLAB knew to print this out as color because there were three color values, let's say, in each cubby in the array. But when we stripped out just one of those values, these now just look like a regular old two by two matrix. And the automatic thing there for MATLAB to do is just print it as gray scale because it's like there's just one value in there and it's considered a value of you know dark versus light. That's all. Okay. So we got these to match, that's nice. The lighter a pixel, pixel appears, the more of that color is contained in the pixel. So that's why when this part we're looking at the blue, the blue part of his mm, nose snout thing is really blue. And so you can see this is very light here, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, the darker that it is, the less blue there is in it. So his eyes are kind of like a a reddish color, aren't they? Kind of an orange. Yeah, very little blue involved there. So um, that's why they look so dark. Okay. Now what we're going to do is convert the original image to a grayscale image um, by using this matrix called gray matrix. And it is, you can see, just filled with one thirds. We're going to use this code. So let's just copy and paste. Copy. And paste. Okay, so what's happening in here? There's the definition of gray matrix, three by three, all of its one thirds. Um, then we have some nested for loops going on in here. So let's see what those are doing. It's going across, I'm guessing these are gonna be going through the rows, right, of our matrix. And, and then as it goes through a row, it's moving across the column value, right? And then what it's doing is it's taking something called pixel color and it is doing reshape double on the cubby ij, but all of the values in it. So what this is doing, we can probably figure out by saying help, but a good guess here is that this is going into each cubby, taking the three values that are stored in there and putting them in a vector. I'm guessing this three and this one is a three by one vector. Um, okay, and then what it's doing is going through each of those cubbies and filling them with um, the color vector, the value of the colors put into a vector, but multiplied by a matrix. So there's a matrix multiplication going on in here. Okay. Let's, let's run this and see if it works. Now it's been copied over, so it probably should. There's our um, original figures there. Now the issue is that we uh, don't have it. Oh, there it is. Now it's displayed. It took it a little bit longer to work through those loops. So this is the grayscale version of the picture and um, it looks good. Do we have a thing to compare it to? Nah. Let's see. No, we don't. But you know, it looks like a grayscale version. It's pretty easy to see that it works. Now, um, let's see here. Yeah, the color attributes are extracted from the matrix, treated as a vector with RGB changed by multiplying the vector by the filter matrix. And then they store that result in the corresponding pixel, um, which is exactly what we guessed by looking at the code. Okay. In your Q1, I think comes at this point, what does U int eight and what does double do? And so what you can do is check them down here and help um, double. These have to do with how the data is being stored. Let's see. 
Um, okay, so double means convert to double precision. Double precision is a, a rule about how it stores the values in like how much space and where it rounds off and things like that. Um, and then u int eight, let's see what that says. u int eight converts the elements of the array into unsigned eight bit integers. Okay, so the values for the colors should be integers between zero and 255. So it's exactly what we want to use for this. It's like um, uh, designed for this, this application, right? Okay. Okay, so at this point, put your Q1. This needs to be formatted exactly like this, percent sign Q1 colon, blah, 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 blah. Okay, next. Now we're going to reproduce the code to produce a sepia version. Is this sepia or sepia? I say sepia. I don't know if that's accurate. Okay, instead of gray matrix, we're going to replace it. We're gonna do the same code, but replace it with a different filter matrix. Now um, I'm gonna have to try and copy those numbers over and remember what they are, right? But we're just gonna take the code that we were using, copy, um, oh look, this code was in there already. I'm gonna cut that and move it down to the more where we answered it. And then we're gonna take all of this code. Let's take all of this, copy, paste. Now we do have to change it, of course. So this is not gonna be gray matrix anymore. This is gonna be sepia. We're going to change all of these numbers. <laughs> okay, so first row is, let's see if I can, this might just screw up all of my display, but um, let's try and, oof, it won't let me. I want this to like, I want to be able to look at it side by side, right? Because I am not the kind of person who can remember the three digit numbers there. So let's, <laughs> let's just do this strategically. Okay, let me find where I want to type. Here we go. Scoot this guy over. Perfect. All right. So this is going to be 0 0.393 space, 0 0.769 space, 0 0.189, semicolon next row, 0 0.349 space, 0 0.686 space, 0 0.168, semicolon next row, 0 0.272 space, 0 0.534 space, 0. 131, okay, so there's my matrix. Let's just go ahead and get back to um, a nice view. Okay, so now I have to find Sepia matrix, there he is. And now um, we are going to, all of this I think can stay the same. We're gonna save this variable um, as mjpeg sepia, I think we can confirm. Yes, that's exactly what we want. And um, I think we should change also in figure where it prints it out. Oh, by the way here, instead of multiplying by gray matrix, we're multiplying by our new matrix, sepia matrix. I think it's okay to reuse the same variable pixel color. It's okay for it to um, redefine it every time. And then we're gonna be displaying this time sepia. Let's run this and hopefully everything has been adjusted. It's gonna take a while to print all of these figures. Doo -doo. There's five. And there's six. Okay, so that's that kind of like antique faded yellowish tone that's what sepia means. Nice, okay? Now, reproduce the code again using the filter matrix, red matrix. And you can see here, it's just I've got a one in this upper left position and zeros everywhere else. So we're gonna call it mjpeg red and display it. So we're just gonna take all of the same code, do, 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 copy, paste, but this time it's gonna be red matrix. It's gonna be much easier. One, zero, 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 oops, just two zeros. Zero, 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 zero. Same code, but now we're doing MJ red yes it's my cat again 
And this is red matrix. And then we're going to display red instead. Make sure all of our names are correct. Looks good. And then we're going to run it to see what it does. Okay? You could probably also think to yourself, what effect is that matrix going to have? So let's just run it too. Do, 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 do. So when you are applying the matrix that we're using right now, um, the effect of having all those zeros in it is that it's going to wipe out everything except for actually the red value. So it's going to, um, when it puts in a vector of three numbers, it's going to keep the first number and make the other two numbers zero. Now, since there's still three numbers in there, it's just that two of them are zero, MATLAB will still consider that color picture, and thus they print it as red here. Okay, so this is just printing the red stuff. Now, let's maybe compare this. What if we compare this to when we pulled out all the reds? Nice. Oh, wait. Here we go. There he is. Look at that. So you can see how, like, the... the I don't know the technical terms for this, but like the tone of it, like how dark or light it is, is the same. It's just now it's like, oh yeah, this is red because there's still three numbers stored in each um, little pixel. Okay, so that's in red and it looks exactly how it's supposed to look there. And you can answer Q2 at this point. Q2, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oops, here we go. Now make up a matrix that deletes all of the red in the image and reproduce the code again. Save it as delete red and display it. Okay, so we're going to use the same code, but we're going to modify the matrix and we're going to make it up ourselves. So this is going to be, uh, I don't know, let's call it delete red matrix. I didn't tell you exactly what to call it, right? I just said make it up. Cool. Whatever. Okay, here we go. Now, what do you want to put in here? So, um, in order to multiply a vector with three numbers in it and just wipe out the first number, let's think about what we need. Um, we need to... Uh, okay, so, so I want you to think about this coming, like starting with an identity matrix. So if you started with an identity matrix and you wiped out the blue and the green, what you have is the red matrix that we used. One. So this, the effect that this has is to not change the first variable and then to wipe out the second and third um, entries. So what I want to do is wipe out the first entry, all of the red information, and I don't want to change the other ones, so I'm going to keep those rows as the same, they would, same as they would be in, a, in an identity matrix. Okay? And then we rename all of this stuff properly. Delete red. Delete red, delete red. Okay, now let's try running it. Boom, boom, boom. Grayscale. Sepia. Red layer, or red channel. I think it's called. And there is this. All the red's been taken out. Looks exactly how it's supposed to look. Perfect. If yours doesn't look like this, check your matrix. Make sure that it is correct. Okay. Now let us permute the colors in the image. To do this, reproduce the code, but using the matrix. So we're going to use the matrix permute matrix. Notice it is what you would have if you took an identity matrix and you swapped the first and third rows. That's also known as a permutation. So this is a permutation matrix, and what it's going to do is swap the first and third values in each of those vectors. So in each picture, it's going to take like the, the number for red, and it's going to use it for green uh, or blue, and it's going to use the blue number for the red. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We just have to um, type in that matrix. So copied the code again, right? I just pasted the same code that we've been using. This is going to be called permute, and it was 0, 0, 001, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 
that was the matrix. This is going to be, I bet, called permute here. This is going to be permute matrix. And then this is going to be permute. Let's go ahead and run it. Yeah, mjpeg permute and display it. And we want it to look like this in the end. So let's go see. It's still producing our figures. So I'm just kind of waiting for that to show up. There's the Sephia. <coughs> okay. We're almost done, actually. <laughs> so even though it takes a while for it to produce all these figures, we're basically there. Oh, here we go. Figure nine. This is what we just did, the permute permutation. And it matches exactly what we wanted. Um, we also might say, you know, I've just described to you that it's going to use the red number for the blue and the blue number for the red and you can kind of see yeah see where like the red things have been turned into blue the eyes were orange now they look blue the nose is red it looks blue now this blue part looks orangey it's kind of reddish so yeah it's been permuted in the way that we thought um, now we're going to do two more um, it is also possible to amplify or deamplify individual colors in the image. Reproduce the code, but use the matrix saturate matrix. Okay, so it uh, looks like an identity matrix, but 0.5 up here and 2 here. So it's a diagonal matrix. The effect that this is going to have, when you multiply this matrix by a, um, a vector, you will find that it will take the first entry and divide it by 2. It'll take the second entry and double it, and it'll leave the third entry the same in your vector. Okay, if you don't believe me, you can take this matrix and you can multiply it by some example vectors um, on some scratch paper or whatever. Okay, we're gonna call this MJPEG saturate. This is gonna be called saturate matrix. We're gonna keep doing all the things we've been doing. Here it is. Okay, saturate matrix. And the stuff in it is 0 0.5, 0, 0, and double the second thing, so 0, 2, 0, and then 0, 0, 1. Okay. Rename all these. Saturate. 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 Okay. Let's let this run. Let's go back and check if there were Qs. Yeah, so here's Q3. What does the transformation above do to the image? I've already mostly described it to you. Think about the effect that this 0.5 will have on the first entry, aka the entry that corresponds to red. Okay, so it's going to take the red amount and cut it in half. We expect the red to kind of decrease. And then it's going to take the second entry, which corresponds to what? Green going to double it so we expect the amount of green to kind of get more intense leaves the blue the same so you know, no change in the blue values let's say okay is it done here we go check that out it's ugly as heck but you can see the blue part stayed pretty blue the red part is very desaturated muted um, it's not red looking at all really anymore but look how green everything else looks. All of the green in this picture has been doubled. So emphasize, it's oversaturated. Okay, so that is going to be how you answer Q3. You just say in your own words, Q3, blah, 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 blah. Okay, one more thing we can do. It is possible to invert the colors of this image by using the following code. Now, um, we are just going to paste this directly in and think about what it's doing. Okay, first of all, we are defining a new variable here called mjpeg invert. And um, this is in fact going to be an array the same size as the mjpeg variable. So 512 by 512 by 3. Now, it looks a little bit weird here because I, it looks like I'm subtracting this big multi-dimensional array from just a number 255. However, MATLAB is wicked smart and it knows that you mean actually take 255, multiply it by the appropriate size identity matrix, or not identity, but um, take all ones, right? 
and then multiply them by 255. So this is a matrix of the appropriate size just filled with the number 255. Then it can do the subtraction because the dimensions match. Then it does the subtraction. The effect of this is that let's say you had a small red number, right, like three. Then when you do the subtraction, you're gonna get a huge, huge, huge number, like um, whatever, 252, right? Very, very huge amount of red in that pixel. So if you have very little red, it becomes having a lot of red. Whereas if you had like 49, uh, not 49, but half, whatever half of this is, you know, I don't know, 120. Okay, and then when you do the subtraction, it's not gonna change very much actually. So this is what it means to invert colors. Um, so this is gonna make a new figure and then this is gonna display that new matrix. Now it didn't have to go through um, each entry. Uh, you could, I'm sure, I guess, write it with a for loop and say, go through each pixel and then in each pixel, go through each number, and in each of the three numbers, do 255 minus that number, but that's crazy. Um, this is a much faster way to just write it. It's just going to be a matrix subtraction. Okay, let's run this. Yes, so this is what I'm saying before here. This 255 looks a little suspicious, but MATLAB is like, I'm assuming this is what you want. Just take everything in there and subtract it from 255 and put it back in an array. And that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Do, 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 do. There's figure nine, but I think we want, yes. Okay, so there's figure 10, which is that saturated one. And here is the inverted picture. Okay, so, for example, this is so difficult. There we go. So, like, um, a lot of the colors now seem kind of opposite, right? Instead of a bright red nose, we have a bright blue nose. There's, like, hardly any red in it anymore. Um, there wasn't, let's say, very much green in it. Uh, or, let's say, there was kind of a moderate amount, a balanced amount of green in it. And so the green hasn't changed too much here in that you can't see... <laughs> like a cha like a, any green really, but you can see a lot of blue and that's because there was so little blue before. And so then it converted to a very large blue number. This part, right, was blue. So there was very little red in it. Now there's a lot of red in it. Um, and there was a lot of blue in it and now there's very little blue in it, etc., etc. Okay, so that's inverted. Very nice. Um, this way, since uh, you can do these all on yourself, on your own, right? You can just follow the directions. Um, and some of the, so to speak, answers are in here by saying what things should look like. But now, you know, you can do yours. I suppose maybe depending on what your computer screen displays things as, your colors may not look 100% exactly like my colors, but they should basically look like the same picture. Okay. All right. So that's this lab. Um, that's it. This is our second to last lab. Um, uh, of course, what you're going to turn in should be described at the top. You're going to be turning in the file, the lab six file that you made. Um, so save it, send it to yourself, submit it. You don't need to turn in the, the JPEG. There's no reason to do that. I have the JPEG already. Okay, perfect. All right, have a great weekend.